guy is constantly trying to do something new with the action, give the audience something they haven't seen before, which is extremely hard to do. The guy's like visceral, he likes it in there and hard and aggressive. So many people have copied him. It's sometimes hard, I think, probably just to do action without feeling like you're copying yourself almost. So he's constantly trying to change the way he does things in order to make things different and feel fresh. What I'm about to feed you, Solo, might taste a little better. Where are we going with this, sir? I wonder if that actually looks like a fight. But it's messy, and I wanted a messy fight. Yeah, no, good. <laughs> the big challenge, I think, in these movies that involve action is coming up with action that feels fresh. And I think, creatively, that's probably the hardest challenge in many ways for us. Guy's style is to be new, be different, be creative, think outside the box. By the time I've cobbled it together, it should look significantly messy and unchoreographed. In fact, I spent the first part of the day unchoreographing it. I feel as if you need a straight on one. I like that. I don't want them looking too cool. Lovely. Car chases have been done so many times. We wanted to make something different, something we hadn't seen before. We looked at the car chases and we wanted to try and make both of them different in their own way. If you look at the Berlin car chase, we have Elia driving a Trabant, and we have Gabby and Solo in a Wartburg. We built both vehicles with a blind driver. So they put this man on top of the car I'm driving. This is in a little tiny little cage. I hadn't seen that before. And this enabled us to drive the vehicles with controlled drivers, but with the artist inside. So I actually get to sit in the car, pretend that I'm driving. One of the things that we did is we did a handbrake turn into a parking space which has been done many times before. But our artists were inside the cars. Hold on. I did it. And then everyone came up to me after the first take. I was like, how are you? Are you scared? And then it kind of clicked in my head that you would probably should be. I just thought it was so much fun. And it was like being in the wildest ride. We wanted to make these cars look like it was two ballerinas dancing within a car chase. We wanted to keep both vehicles really close to one another. And we wanted to drive around corners and we wanted to do a 360 degree spin. So we adapted one of the vehicles to be extremely light and we basically made a rig where we could attach the two vehicles together. When you see that, that is for real. But then when you break that down, you want to be with the artists. So the other thing we did is in a green screen environment, as we've built a hydraulic turntable, we got the two vehicles together and independently we could move the cars backwards and forwards so it looked like they were gaining on one another and also make them move independently and at the same time rotate them 360. Yeah. And, and uh, on the second time we do it, look over your shoulder. Nicely done. They can drive down an alleyway, and we're driving too fast. Now put your foot down and drive a little faster. We get wedged into the alleyway itself. Part of our job was making that work in real time. An alleyway set was built, and we built a roller coaster rig, which would allow the car to be suspended and have the artist inside as well. And we pulled it down this track into a breakaway section. Every day was tough. We had a lot of stunts, we had a lot of action. You jump out of the window and it's not supporting you at all, like you're free falling at the ground and it catches you at the very last second. <laughs> We're both physical people, so we enjoy to do it. Army's doing all of his stunts on his own, and I mean, Army's kind of crazy that way. I mean, like, he's, he's just wild. All in a day's work. Guy wanted to land a truck on top of a boat. What we did is we designed a rig that would allow a lightweight truck to drive a distance. We then engage into a rig that we built. And this rig would allow it to land exactly on the spot. Within the boat, we used pyrotechnic charges that were holding part of the boat together as a seal. And then when we blew the charges, that allowed the water to come in. And then with an assisting cable, pulled the whole rig down under the water. It's a rock crawler, which is under there. Of course, everyone got snotty about the fact that it wasn't period correct. But I wasn't going to let that get in the way. We 
definitely wanted the off-road vehicle, the rock crawler as we called it, to be a strong, powerful, animalistic type vehicle. The guy really wanted to see it coming up extreme hills and kicking up a lot of mud and grabbing. 525 brake horsepower, four-wheel drive, higher, lower ratio, gear ratio. I think it's kind of the perfect looking car. It flies. We did manage to take it across water. Guy at the very beginning had seen these guys drive a car at really high speed towards a lake and they don't sink in it because they're going at such high speed, they literally aquaplane across the lake. Uh, special tyres were added and the vehicle was pumped up. Here we go. I think that's a movie first that you've never seen before. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> But when you see that car going across that lake, that car is hovering across that lake. When you do those big action scenes, they do take a lot of time. Yeah. It's tough to do one scene for two weeks. Yeah, so it's a semi-smack. Yeah, which is, yes. Go over, go over, please, Gordy. Go over, mate. He comes in, stamps, stamps on him. Picks him up here. Yeah. And then, boom, there's Johnny's back. Yeah. Thank you, wrap it up! I think we've come up with some things in this movie that the audience will go, wow, we haven't quite seen that before. It's pure watchability to me. Ah! That's brilliant. I like the film. I like the energy. It radiates. Let's finish this. Shall we?